have been a pretty <laughs> elite team. Uh, they haven't won a season in a long time, but they've made it to the finals at the very least. And now we're in the current state where they have they just struggle to get it together. So Victor and Callista, you have to ban Callista against OQ. Yeah. LeBlanc also banned against Frozen. Victor is available this week, and Frozen, Victor, and Cassiopeia are his mains. And the Varus ban coming in. Vayne ban also from uh, IM. Bit surprised to see the Varus ban, but Nodge and me have experienced massive trauma at the hands of <laughs> Faker's Varus. And Frozen is the kind of player with his Xerath stylings that yeah. likes these long range skill shots, likes these uh, limited mobility mid laners where he can play from the back line. So it does make sense. It does suit Frozen's style. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, Monty, I mean, if Najin is still going to go for the style where they want Gugan and Oki to be able to duel their opponents, I mean, just getting chipped out all day long in the lane is not something he's going to be looking forward to. And they do get to secure their Gragas, given how the bans worked out. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that they wanted to ban the Vayne over the Gragas. To me, the Gragas just enables the Vayne, and Vayne is handleable if they don't have a Gragas right. on the enemy team. A lot easier to deal with. Uh, but they're just going to give it over. Watch has put a massive premium on that champion, and it's no surprise that Najib would go ahead and first pick that. Looking at the Sivir right now. Yeah, Sivir is still being considered pretty high priority. I mean, just because of that utility as always. And then the Azir for Frozen. Yeah, Goong hovering over this Cassid in a very Goong-like champion. His Xerath play hasn't been spectacular, and I really don't like Xerath in the current meta. I don't think that he does enough in these team fights, but Cassid in, definitely a champion Goong should be comfortable on. Definitely a, a champion that can do well in the Azir matchup in terms of scaling into the late game, just trading the Azir poke with the and they're going to take Hecarim early on. I think this is dangerous. Uh, Apple plays Gnar. Gnar does well in lane against Hecarim, yeah. especially post Black Cleaver. Yeah, and also, I mean, given the picks they have now, the Nautilus by far not a flex pick. It's pretty obvious where that's going to go in the bottom lane, given the Hecarim. So, Najin really prioritizing, kind of saving up their mid and AD carry rolls. And again, I mean, they're still putting a premium on those, you know, being able to pick into a comfortable position, being able to center their other picks around that. So a little bit more just flexible standard meta picks. And then the Sejuani being picked up for the jungle for Tucson on Long Zhu's side. Yeah, a little bit more of a reserved and passive pick from Ignar, who's really liked Thresh and Alistair so far. Now going with the Jana for the disengage. So this is going to be one of his first professional games on a disengage support. So we'll see how he does on that. He has that flexibility to play a different style of support well. And Goon could go Zed here. I mean, early picking that is Zir against a massive Zed player like Goon. Goon definitely has the Zed skills to totally take over the game. Now, the Zed on patch. 5.9 was nerfed a little bit. Right. And we haven't seen him played since then. Could go for the Cassiopeia, but Goong's Cassiopeia was not spectacular when we've seen it in the past. Oh, Q. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of scaling, we got the Cassiopeia and Tristana here for Najin. And, you know, the Zed, I think someone, you know, like whether it's Faker or Goong, they could still bring out the Zed on this patch. But again, it really does take away the fact that you can't just play as risky, and that's kind of the advantage of playing Assassins, is that you get to take those big risks. So, uh, Najin falling back on generally what's more consistent pick against Azir. OQ does this. Sometimes he'll just randomly play <laughs> Tristana. He does this from time to time in, uh, in games. He did it last season. It was not effective at all. It's like space and his vein, man. <laughs> Sometimes they're just like, but I like this champion. It was the first champion I bought a skin for, Coach. You know, I, I think I really want to play this champion now and then. <laughs> Favorite skin in the game. I don't know. I'm just not generally a fan of Tristana these days. I think you don't have that same power spike that you had previously. You can fast push turrets relatively well with it at this point in time, but yeah, if you're going to play changes. that, just play Jinx. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, for quite some time, I think Tristana doesn't really have any strong advantages over other AD carries. I mean, it's very apparent what she does, but so many other AD carries can do similar things and then other utility on top of that or, you know, more power spikes earlier or something like that. But we do have all the lineups set. Nar, as we expected, being picked up by Apple for Long Zhu uh, in that top lane against Hecarim. So Duke's going to have a bit of a hard time, generally speaking. Yeah, I... Now, there was a buff 
to Tristana this patch, which is that her explosive charge got a little bit more, 5% more damage to it per stack, moving from 25 to 30. Right. It's not a massive buff. <laughs> Yeah, massive, I don't think that's really gonna be what pushes Tristana into suddenly like much stronger status. It, it just helps her a little bit. Uh, you know, it helps to harass a little bit. It can help the pushing a little bit. But we'll see how Oki uses it. As you mentioned, I mean, Oki does this now and then, so I don't think we really need to think too much into it. I think it's just him being himself and going against that Sivir Janna lane on the other side. So Ignar having a big role here against that Hecarim. Uh, even against the Gragas, even the Cassiopeia who needs to get pretty close for her ultimate, of course, with that flash, generally speaking. I'm just wondering if this OQ Trista is going to be used in lane or in a split push capacity. Well, we'll find out as we jump into the game. So many players on Notch and EM Fire, and yet we've only seen five of them this season. Nine players, only five get to play, apparently. <laughs> I'll see if Goong's Cassiopeia has improved. He's been a player that struggles to pick up new champions in the past, and he really looked pretty shaky on Cassiopeia when he tried to play it earlier in this season. And Okius Tristana will be a lane swap where you just use that explosive charge to shove down turrets. It's gonna be the question. Um, in general, no Tristanas have been doing well recently. <laughs> oh, well, we'll see. Maybe Oki wants to just change that. Maybe he's got a little bit of imp in him. He <laughs> wants to change the meta piglet, too, you know? <laughs> These 80 carries have those moments where they're like, I'm going to suddenly bring but out Corky or Vayne. Let me tell you, Chobra, it's a bad idea to let 80 carries start thinking. They're not there for the thinking. <laughs> it's where we go for the junglers and the supports. They're there for the being able to click really fast. <laughs> Just have him focus on that. That's true. Yeah, I mean, even with Piglet and Imp, I can't think of many games where they wanted to change the meta and they succeeded. <laughs> they generally <laughs> failed those times. And then they reverted to other other picks. Uh, both mid laners also seeing that cleanse because of all that CC on each side, really. I mean, both sides having a lot of hard crowd control to uh, come gank. Uh, the support's, of course, pure that Nautilus can roam quite a bit, especially with this lane swap. So Frozen's going to have to watch out. My favorite thing about Korean Tristana is that she still says, is there a rocket in your pocket? But it makes no sense in the context of the Korean language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. One of, one of the few times that game translations were just directed with no other culture. Definitely <laughs> should language. not. It doesn't even rhyme or anything either. It just makes no sense. You know, at least with rum, they say rumju. <laughs> That's my playing. favorite. The, he just says yo ho ho rumju, which means rum alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Some fun things about the Korean League of Legends client. So it will be the lane swap, uh, but freezing occurring for this Tristana. We'll see how long he wants to hold that or if he wants to break it. Meanwhile, just going up into the jungle and looks like Najin are we trying to go red to red right here? They are there. Tucson and Apple both coming, but it is going to be a 3v2. Now, can Tucson maybe go for the steal? Do you see the Baron? Nope. Even with the barrel there, they didn't have their own vision, so can't even try for a smite. And Longzu will just have to settle for less after that little invade coming in from Dodgen. Yep. And yeah, they're just going to keep. Stick it around that jungle right there, making sure that there's nothing that can be going on, denying. Wow, that hurts a lot. Apple's ability to get into lane while taking his CS before backing off. We'll see how much they want to commit. Hecarim teleports to the bottom side. Duke will be there. Duke with a, an Ignite this game, actually, instead of Smite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for, for Tucson and Apple, uh, even for Sejuani, that early farm is going to be pretty important on what you can do, especially if you can get to that level six. And like you mentioned, Apple, a little bit at a disadvantage, but now that Long Zhu is just sticking the other two up there with him, uh, he's caught up somewhat, and we'll see where they go forward from here. Do they try to fight for the blue to even out in the farm? Yeah, it looks like they're just going to walk in right there. They broke the freeze in the top side. Now Apple not going to stick around in lane alongside Ignar. They want to take a buff instead. Of course, blue buff not going to be the end of it. 
uh, end of the game rather for Watch. He's just going to back off, go ahead and do the Wolves. And interesting pathing here from both sides early on in this game. A lot more contest over camps than we typically see. And good reactions really from both sides. So nobody getting too far behind right there. Everything answered really in turn. The only okay. difference is, what, Oki's win rate? Yeah, it's on Tristana, 50%. 50%. It's, it just speaks so much about why he picks it. It's, like, uh. it's good, guys, I swear. <laughs> I'm actually going to look up uh, what his specific stats are on that champion, not just 50%. <laughs> well, we'll see. I mean, I'm sure. Like, I mean, his KDA was good, and Oki's a good player. He's He has good mechanics. It's just he still hasn't really found that consistency and that patience uh, to be a completely top tier professional player, but he he's a young looked, guy. So. He looked a lot better against the Koo Tigers, yes. though, to his credit. That was Absolutely. a more solid performance. Tristana is his most played champion of all time, actually. He's nine and six on it professionally overall. All right. And just continuing the push up here, Apple and Tucson now both gonna stick around. Tucson just wants to make sure that Apple doesn't get in any emergency trouble. And Apple can safely farm up. And he'll at least get all the experience. He won't be able to get all the last hits as much as he wishes. So when you're talking about those 50% statistics, that's probably his record in champions, whereas the record, the stat right. I cited includes NLB more than likely. That's the reason for the difference right there. And otherwise, all is quiet and as expected after a lane swap. A little bit of an interesting initiative from Najin in the jungle, but Tucson was able to even out with the blue steel. And right now they do spot watch. Putting a ward there with the pink, so not no games happening, no cleanse, nor flash being blown from Frozen. And I mean this what an advantage by Azir. To be able to clear wards all the way on the other side of that brush. One of the best champions of the game for clearing wards from range. Yeah. Definitely one of the best reasons to pick him too. I mean, because he has all the other stability factors, and then on top of that. You can control vision very well. Pure is still roaming about, and as you might expect, I mean, he's so good with that Nala's on ganks and whatnot if you go ahead with Gragas, especially in the mid lane. Apple just up in the top side right now, and we'll see what Apple decides to build. A lot of players want to go for that frozen heart, and then the Black Cleaver just to keep the Hecarim in lane as long as possible and win the split pushing war because Hecarim just can't close the gap once those auto attacks from Frozen Heart, Black the Cleaver. Frozen Mallet. Or Frozen Mallet, yes, <laughs> excuse me, yes, Frozen Mallet. Uh, start coming in, so that's been a strong counter ever since the release of the new Black Cleaver, and that's yes. why a lot of players, if they want to play Hecarim, will ban out the Gnar, and we see Apple's Gnar banned a lot. So Duke showing a lot of confidence that he will early pick the Hecarim and not ban the Gnar, knowing that Apple's Gnar is actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think Najin really just kind of focusing on the team factor there, especially if they were planning on going for the lane swap anyway. Uh, just trying to maybe force fights later on, uh, especially if Oki can kind of hit his own power spike on time. <laughs> Oki is standing in that ward. Going to get disrupted a little bit. Uh, not the end of the world, though. Well, do we see any other interesting movements for the junglers? Not for now. Uh, just some vision control around Dragon for Long Zhu and maybe looking for an opportunity against Goom. Again, both mid laners do have two defensive summoner spells, so I don't think any kills are going to happen the first time. But now, I'm wondering what Najin's going to do with this composition. They have some good burst damage or some damage over time to get OQ into a position where he starts to reset. But there's so much crowd control on IM that it's very dangerous for OQ to jump into any of these fights and continue to reset. So I don't really know how he's going to get involved in some of these team fights when he's just going to be shooting from the outside. And with the changes to Tristana, you don't have the same luxury of quite the same range and uh, attack speed over, a, over the course of a team fight that you had previously. Right. Generally pretty dangerous to give players like OQ a champion who has a huge benefit for jumping into the enemy team. But they have <laughs> a million can, ways to deal with it, it right? It can go yeah. quite all right. Everyone uh, except for Roar has a way to deal with him jumping in, and Roar yeah. also can minimize the damage because so much of Tristana's damage is now focused around her explosive charge. Yes. And with a spell shield, see that one coming in, pretty easy. 
just to block it, and that cuts down just on his damage output oh, by boy. a significant amount. And there's Deucin Watch. might just give up the first blood here. Has to use his own ult. The Glacier Prison being used on Watch, and Watch not going to follow through. Just going to be content with taking out the Sejuani ultimate and stealing the red. I mean, that's pretty big. Sejuani not going to have as great ganks anymore, even post-6 right now for some time. And speaking of bans like Gnar, no Gragas ban this game. Watch has shown a lot less proficiency on champions not named Gragas this season, but he's been pretty good on Gragas overall, so yeah. I don't know why you would give that one away necessarily to him. A decent trade for Long Zhu, but Roar running a little bit low on resources, so gonna have to use his spell shield quite wisely. Watch still has his explosive cast, so he could go for a gank and maybe force him to summon his or even a kill in any lane. Uh, he has that advantage uh, for about or so as Tucson then decides all right well we'll just go for dragon he was on the top side uh, Oki is at half health yeah wow actually watch get a recall right there Cassiopeia not even going to check it they're looking for the support they should know if the support's not there that they're doing dragon right now yeah well it's just gonna be a free dragon it's too late now even if they know so Tucson will just be able to secure that dragon that's the payback he gets against watch for stealing his red and forcing his ult out well, I am. They tried to use the timing of the blue buff transfer because they took the blue buff last time, so they right. had that timer. And so that's what they were trying to hit right there. They were a little bit late because by the time they started that dragon, Goong had the blue buff and was back in lane. So there was a risk there that Najin could have disrupted them, but Najin not checking. Still a little bit of a missed timing there from Incredible Miracle that could have probably tried to do that dragon a little bit sooner. Right. But they weren't punished for it this time. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep up with that. Since now they have the exact timer on the dragon once again. Uh, whereas Najin just kind of has to guess given the time that Ignar returns and of course given the time that they saw the buff go down on Roar. And watch. Just roaming about. Activating that buff from the Raptors. Not going to be able to clear that ward though. He's busy going into the enemy jungle getting that vision. And looking for a little bit more jungle dominance. I mean, Tucson really hasn't able to do much. And as you mentioned, he's already been playing pretty passive uh, in the beginning of the season. And with this much pressure coming in from Watch, he's already a level behind and hasn't really been able to do anything aggressive in lane. He just has to show up to help cover, really. Well, and just one he's so fine to farm with, but he's not even farming that well. He's right. down 15 CS already compared to Watch's Gragas. And like you mentioned, uh, level behind also so he's just pretty much comprehensively getting outplayed here by watch on the map consistently harassed and he's got to figure out something to do his ult's back up he needs to make a play on one of these lanes because duke's hecarim really isn't having any troubles dealing with apple's gnar yet Let's see what apple wants to build if he's going to go for that team fight build or the frozen mallet build to continue split pushing yeah, I mean, given the timings, they maybe, like you mentioned, he will go for that team fight build, depending on the next dragon and how much I am wants to prioritize that over other towers. And Watch just helping shove down this bottom lane. I mean, Watch is really taking all the initiatives within the jungle. Tucson always reacting. He charges in, but doesn't really find a good angle for the ultimate, especially with Roar and Ingnar being a bit behind. So Najin is using that Tristana just to hard push these towers right now and start snowballing an advantage off of it, but there's a really good tower defense with the Sivir and the Azir, so I'm not sure how much Oki's going to be able to brute force the first ring of towers against this particular composition, which would seem to be Tristana's strength right here. Yeah, I mean, I think given how the game is playing out, after they shove out this first one, by then they can start setting up for the next dragon, and they'll have to force a fight given the power of Gragas and Hecarim in that team fight. Uh, around Dragon the first time they meet. They'll be right around probably level 10, 11 right there. If they play it out right, I mean, Oki get a couple resets, force Longzu back, and then go for the mid from there on. But if they don't get that, like you mentioned, I don't think just a head-on push is going to work very well against IM right yeah, now. Yeah, they, they have an awkward composition for sieging with Cassiopeia and Hecarim. Yeah, and really just OQ is going to be the only one doing damage to the towers. And sure, Tristana has good range, and you can shove the lane pretty fast with Cassiopeia alongside Tristana, but they'll be able to clear just as well. And Apple, Frozen, and Roar all have ways to even poke out more, in fact, while they're defending their towers. The tide is reversed, at least in the bottom wave right now. Goom just going to walk back, play it safe, getting some wolves, and as 
Looks like Brock is going to be going to the bottom side, so Watch not going to need those before they respawn. And yeah, Tusim now finally having some time to just roam around his own jungle, but it's been cleared out so often by Watch, and he's still just remaining just about 10 to 15 CS behind. Finally going for his red buff in peace this time. They get a nice view on Watch going up to that top lane. I mean, Deport's coming in from Long Zoo IM also, so their lanes have been just as safe. But it's just that that means Watch is just getting a single-handed advantage over Tucson. And here we go. Grog is coming through the tri brush. He will be seen by a pink ward there. And will be forced to clear instead of making a play. Let's trade a little bit. Yep. Oh, With but Apple. that allows Duke to continue farming just fine. And I think that's okay for Najin. Pretty happy with where it is. Dragon coming up in a minute 20 now would be a good point to check what the game plan is for both teams, how much they prioritize the dragon or a fight that dragon at the very least. Well, Najin probably shouldn't be fighting a dragon yet unless they can catch Apple before he goes back for another buy mm -hmm. because he's been sitting on just a couple of items for quite some time now. But let that tier stack up. You need to get that Tristana into a late game state. You may not want to commit this early on. And Roar and Ignar oh. really punishing. OQ and Pure pushing up that turret constantly after they get back into lane. Yeah, I mean, ever since Watch left that lane, Nachi really didn't have that advantage to shove up anymore, and Long Zoo may well, actually get the first tier first in the bottom lane. Sivir just has better wave clear than Tristana because you can just do so much. Oh, wow. Goon's going to get caught as Yuri's coming around the side of the Raptors, and Goon goes for the fight first, and he's going to have to flash over, also use the cleanse after the Glacial Prison. So both summoners taken out from Goon while Frozen didn't even have to use his ultimate. Yeah, no ult from Goon either for this upcoming dragon fight if there is one now. Najin has to be extremely careful about what they're going to do. Uh, Duke has home guards, but he's not going to stick around in base actually to use those even though there's no imminent minion wave at his top tier turret. So he's not gonna be trying for that home guard flank coming out of top lane. And yeah, not just yet, so much vision around the Dragon Pit, of course, earlier there with the Raptors too, uh, from Tucson and Frozen, but some of it will get cleared out. They still got the Scuttle Crab though for Long Zoo IM, so Najin just gonna get their own vision there and settle for that as a mission, Najin. Not too concerned about forcing something there yet. Watch just going on a casual wander through the river. And <laughs> 26 HP on the bottom turret. This could work out very well for IM if they can just shove through to the tier two right before they try this dragon. Goon's ultimate's gonna be back up soon, but Watch takes a whole heap of damage. Yeah, Apple just uh, went into fatigue after being transformed to Mega Nar, so they won't have that option immediately, but given that Watch got shoved out a little bit, uh, down to half health, uh, they have another small window. Roar wants to go home and get an item though. So it looks like they really want to set up a distinct oh, advantage. It. And he's going to actually complete the recall. So oh. will this prompt huh. Najin to go? It will indeed. Scrying orb used there by OQ. Yeah. And now that they know they'll have that 5v4, they just take it. Well, I mean, I think that was a bit of a just I don't know why you needed to go Long back Zion, for yeah. Berserker Greaves. I mean, I, I, I would assume if you weren't seen, uh, Roar wanting a distinct advantage if they were to force a fight, assuming that OQ was going to clear. But you got seen, so I think their team really should yeah, communicate that the, you stay. Yeah, you stop the recall at that point. You continue to contest the objective because you have the advantage. You're sitting there still trying to stack a tier if you're Goong, and Roar could have just kept on pushing this turret to get the gold and then had more control over Dragon. Really bad decision from Incredible Miracle. Yeah, so they eventually even out pure trying to check for wards. They're both going to get vision within the jungle of Najin. And so Long Zhu is still being able to push out after taking that tier one and bottom. Tucson is going to run out, doesn't want to get caught unawares. Roar getting some good damage in. And in the top lane, uh, Duke choosing not to teleport back up after being forced out. So Apple does get to shove that one in too. So Najin no longer really having that advantage of pushing towers down fast with Tristana. Uh, pure you know taking. why? <laughs> why is that? Because there is no advantage to playing this out of Chobra. <laughs> There's not an advantage Do we have. Well, pretty straightforward. Tell that to Okiu. 
Oh, Tele believe, I told you Duft at MSI too as he was busy, busy getting wrecked by SK Telecom. <laughs> <laughs> Their group stage game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I remember that game. And then guess what? He switches to Jinx. Boom. Tower's gone all day. <laughs> yeah, just on a not really in a spot where there's a clear reason to pick her. But, I mean, if there was a stamp, substantial buff at this 5.9 patch, sure, but there is a very minor buff. It does, what, 5% extra damage per stack. Yeah, I and don't that, think. So it's 20% 20, 20 overall That to an ability that you have to charge up. Yeah. It doesn't really change Not how she's played or when she gets strong, you know. It's, you can kind of just neglect that. Uh, meanwhile, Long Zoo IM's bottom tier one has also been sitting at 54 health for quite some time now, but they've been doing really well just holding that off. And sure, it's going to go down eventually, probably right here as it's a 3v2, but they bought enough time to push down two tier ones against the enemy team thing, while giving up that dragon, of course. But now Najin not having as much leisure to just go from lane to lane and knock down Curse one by one. Uh, this is the part where Najin tries to get into the mid lane to push down a tower against an Azir with blue buff. I don't know if this is going to go <laughs> so well for them. Yeah, Ingnar also showing up there. Janna, of course, also pretty good defense. I mean, can clear decently as support and also puts that shield on the turret uh, to save it. Uh, Apples, turret at top, a little bit low, but not nearly as low as Duke's was before it got taken down. Well, how are they going to stop this Gnar, though, is the question. We're going to see OQ come into lane alongside Pure. He's going to get this entire long lane of farm right now. They think he's going to be the better one to deal with the frozen mallet. So we're back to this. Give OQ 30 more minutes to just farm. Forget all the other Terra Towers. Keep, keep Hecarim out of the Gnar lane. Keep yeah. the Trisana in the Gnar lane. Unfortunately, it'll be instantly reacted to. Apple recalls and then goes to continue his harassment of Duke. And Frozen this matchup is really not great for Hecarim. You just yeah. have no way to close in to get damage off, and you get kited forever. So, especially if that Nar gets Black Cleaver, you have to have somebody come help the Hecarim with the Nar. Yes. Uh, Apple is still sitting on an extra cloth armor, though, so. Not building directly into that just yet, but the Frozen Mallet is already enough to make Duke's life pretty annoying. And he also has that Ignite, so no way to really guarantee that he can push and then get out if there's trouble. Yeah, he can't clear out any cannon minions at a tower either with a smite or anything like that. Oh, Watch out. gets caught all alone. He has to flash over the wall, but nice Glacial Prism buys long as I am sometime. There is the Howling Gale, and First Blood goes over to Frozen with the Emperor's Divide. Roar gets a second kill, and he wants to chase through. OQ is going to back out just fine. But long as I am, we see Ping's going down on Baron. They want to go for it. I mean, they took no damage, and the jungler on the enemy team is dead now. They have to be careful about this. There is a Cassiopeia and a Hecarim. Yeah, All of the damage is still alive. This is a alive. lot of damage coming in from Notch. And Baron is going down fairly quickly for 22 minutes. And there is a Cassiopeia. Too. Apple gets locked up. Tucson gets uh, feared by Duke. And they are going to chase out this Zwani out. And Oku steals the Baron at 22. He gets the resets. He gets a double kill afterwards. Wow. Well, uh, <laughs> that, that buff, man. <laughs> that buff. <laughs> I, you know, this should not have happened. No, nope. <laughs> you don't, you don't give a Trisana a free bear at 22 minutes. You, uh, well, I don't know what I am were thinking. They used their Sivir ult and their Sejuani ult during that pick, and they were just trying to keep up with the combat. As we look right here, I mean, there was nothing. All the damage is still here. Hecarim just ults them. Baron's doing an events about damage. They force two, two Sin just runs away. And <laughs> one auto attack at 20 HP from Oku finishes it off. Like, you know there's a lot of high damage carries coming in. Guess what? There's a lot of AoE from Hecarim and Cassiopeia. And if one of you dies, the reset chain from a Tristana is going to be hopping back and forth over the wall, killing absolutely everybody. Well, Najin can now continue with their original I mean, plan. <laughs> why not if you're IM? You've got a couple good picks right there. Just take the tier two in the top lane. 
yeah. and continue to punish them. I thought that's what they were going to do. 22-minute I mean, the... Baron when you don't kill any of the AoE damage sources. Insane. Yeah, big risk. Did not pay off. And Najin gets the Baron. They get to shove down the Tier 2 in mid. And now Najin is where they originally imagined themselves being at around the 25-minute mark, except for the next extra Baron. <laughs> so... <laughs> That was a, a, that a was a, day. I don't use this word often. That was a truly epic Baron throw. <laughs> One of the earlier Baron throws you see too. I mean, usually Baron throws happen at like 40 minutes when the game is definitely going to end its throw. But this is just Goong setting the time of his life, shoving in lanes with that Ludens Echo, and, and then just giving the buff to the minions to push forward a little bit quicker. And Najin now trying to set up a lot of vision. They have a lot of vision on the bottom side of the map and slowly working towards the top as we see Pure going into the enemy jungle. Okiu shoving up the top lane. Looks like that's where they want to target first, but not everyone there just yet. Duke uh, pretty far. His teleport still has a little bit of time left and watch coming all the way from base, so they'll have to allow Longzo IM to hold off for just a couple of seconds here. Well, going for the Bloodthirster now too on this Tristana just trying to scale here. Uh, doesn't need any kind of last whisper or arm penetration yet, considering that Tucson is building. He'll get, up, he'll get up to a Randwins eventually, but there's just not enough armor yet to justify it when he can get more protection instead. Watch this go. He's going to check with the barrel. He gets caught, but he's going to body slam away. Tucson maybe learning his lesson, doesn't want to commit too much of his skills to just one person this time around when they know that they're going to be potentially shoved in. Now the Baron buff is over for Najin, but I mean they got enough pressure in that they've been able to chip away at these tier twos and top and bottom also. And again, I mean the mid was cleared, so now Najin, if they continue playing it right, they'll have that pressure advantage all throughout the game. Yeah, two with a frozen heart complete now as well. It's such a good item against IM's composition. Because it, it affects a zero's a damage output as well. Mm. Frozen Heart is That's extremely true. effective against the Zir, even though you don't get any bonuses from the armor, just lowering that attack speed really hurts the Zir in general. So that's a, a bit of a counterintuitive item counter to a Zir. There we see that Nar still has that advantage in that 1v1 lane harass, but Goom showing up to pressure Apple back so that he can't chase forever. And Apple, he was chasing Duke out while being two levels behind, just shows the power of that long range frozen mallet. Yeah, it's it's extremely potent. And Goom taking some damage there. Tucson gets caught with the bison. There's the explosive cast already used. Now watch is just gonna get chased out by Roar. There's a glacial person up to pure and Goom. Goom is at about a third health and both teams will just back out after some important ultimates used. Yeah, but much more used by Incredible Miracle right there. You're not going to be so ex upset about using an explosive cask on that very short cooldown. Yeah, that's true. Gragas is ultimate. Always known for the short cooldown. Depth Charge also was used by Pure, but again, if the explosive cask comes back, that's still going to be more important, especially when you want to shove in a tower. You can push the enemy team back to secure the tower and then run away. And on the hunt, also really important for long so I am being used right there. Well, I am, in spite of that awkward Baron call, actually has done very well this game. They held on well during the Baron. They were playing quite well before that. Their picks that they got immediately before attempting that ill-advised Baron were <laughs> quite well played out. Oki is with Sandy I, I push with War is forever now. Not sure what his plan was. He's just going to rocket jump out. Um, maybe that was the plan. But Ignar wasn't there first to get that lockdown in, so we're just going to chase him away after doing some damage. But he'll want to steal that back quite a bit with just a Doran's Blade. Uh, but of course, if he runs into a 2v1, it's still going to be dangerous. So Oki now is way far back where he's pretty confident there's no ward. Just waiting for the lane to come in. He's still on that farming spree, trying to make sure that he can hard carry no matter what happens. It's not actually that far ahead of Roar, though, in the end. Took a lot yeah. of that CS in the side lanes. But Duke managed to get, you know, keep it at least par with Apple as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the CS has been pretty much all evened out. Tucson also not falling much more behind since the first disadvantage. And OQ is having a good time in base. Waiting for the Bloodthirster. <laughs> would you dance for a Bloodthirster, Chobra? What would you do for a Bloodthirster? <laughs> I would not do that Baron earlier for the Bloodthirster. <laughs> <laughs> I would 
could not do that. There are limits. Worse, but... <laughs> there are limits, Chalbra. <laughs> Things yeah. I would not do for a Bloodthirster. <laughs> well, uh, Najin, I mean, with the advantage they got with that Baird, uh, they're still able to, again, just keep up the pressure, but Longzo I am isn't losing much more after that, and they're trying to set up some picks here, waiting for Najin, because they know Najin wants to get deeper vision before taking the other tier twos. Now, Baron is up in 15 seconds, so Najin not too eager to go deep just yet. They just need enough vision right around the red buff here to make sure that they can find a window if they want to go for that second Baron, or at least to see if IM will go for another ill-advised Baron. Two cent, uh, Arctic Assault 4, but there's a nice oh. ultimate over the wall by Goom Freezing. Two people, Ignar goes down immediately. What a nice hit. Yeah, you right have to be edge. you have to be so careful in that corridor. Uh, if you don't have vision in the river, you can't be making plays like that where you walk there if you don't have a pink ward on the a high ground because that kind of ambush is so easy to make happen. Now Kira just gonna clear out the wards and Duke was still in top lane. They're just gonna go ahead and start this off. Okyu has that bloodthirster and he'll be able to do some decent damage. Charge. Frozen doing a lot of poke damage, but Goong is still at full health. There's the Cassiopeia. That should be able to burn it through. Now, does Tucson go for the steal? He's going to go in, but he can't get it. Oki gets the Baron once again, and they'll just be happy with a kill against Wash. They will flash back out over the wall, but the Baron goes to Najin again. Oki, the hero that Najin needed. Watch didn't even smite right there. I don't it's know the buff, why Oki. <laughs> the 5.9 buff, it's too strong. <laughs> I don't know why OQ keeps getting all of these barons. Yeah, it's a it's a little it says a lot about Watch. <laughs> but uh, OQ just Watch wasn't alive for the last Baron to be fair to watch. Very true and oh my gosh, he gets the dragon too! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> he didn't even have his E that high, it was just one hit with the static shiv. And just the pure stats from his items. And this Ladies and gentlemen, is why we keep seeing OG's Tristana, because he has these games. <laughs> He's just magic today, I guess. <laughs> Take every single objective wow. with Tristana. Well, now just to make this a standard dodging game, we need to have OQ throw a little bit in approximately eight or nine minutes. It's now time for him to turret dive by himself. <laughs> yes. Then like, I'm so strong. We, will, we have completed. <laughs> The saga of OQ as a player. <laughs> uh, flashes of brilliance, flashes of luck, flashes I mean, of death. <laughs> what a. It, it was just an auto. <laughs> There's not much more. Uh, well, it's got to be a pretty big hit to uh, Logzoyam's morale here, getting that dragon stolen too by just one auto from a Tristana. I mean, sure, Tristana had good items, but. It's not how you imagine things getting stolen. Still no Last Whisper, and now this is getting to a point where you actually need one. A couple of Randuins already completed. And pick up that item soon if you want to break through the rather terrifying tank line that IM has. Now, of course, not going to be too terrifying with the current gold lead that Najin is enjoying here. 9,000. And they're trying to split push, trying to use that Baron buff just to keep the pressure on. Having that Hecarim in the top side. Hecarim a little bit more sustained right now with that Spirit Visage in his W. Yeah, can't see just shoving up that mid lane. And wow, look at this damage that he's going to do to this tower. Wow, the Explosion Charge just chunks it down about a quarter health on its own as it pops. And that tower is now gone. Inhibitor open in the bottom lane. So Boom comes up to join as his Petrifying Gaze. Available. I keep saying glaze whenever I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Petrifying glaze. Well, that doesn't sound like a very appetizing donut. It's been happening Chopra. ever since. Is that what you, you go to Dunkin' Donuts here in Korea? You're like, I would like a petrifying glaze, please. Just a note. The Dunkin' Donuts in Korea, not as impressive as the Dunkin' Donuts in America. Just a note. Dunkin' Donuts in America, not, not that impressive. <laughs> very true. <laughs> well, Duke has been... Keeping the pressure up in that top lane, it's very close to temperature. It's gonna, it's gonna sit there until Najin is able to do something here in the mid lane. And if they don't, it'll be time for another Baron and another Dragon. So Najin having all the advantages. Uh oh, Oku's starting to get really happy and really confident. It's danger zone. 
And Tucson getting caught a little bit. Wow, there's the petrifying gaze onto Ignar once again. He gets deleted. Apple, Mega Nar charged up, but not an opportunity as the tower goes down. Oki just got rid of that tower while they were busy watching Ignar disappear from the map. And Oki just gonna beat down the inhibitor also. He's gonna back off a little bit though. Frozen's still pretty scary. As Watch yeah, goes down to half health. Make sure Apple is out of the Mega Nar form while they continue to push. Well, he's just away from there. Frozen gets caught. There's the Empress by Death Charge, and Frozen goes down to Goof. Oku taking a lot of hits, but oh, he pushes back forward. Thought he could get the kill, doesn't get the last hit. There is a Zier turret right there, but the dive not going to matter. There's a reset from Oku. Can he get the last hits? No, Goom diving in, and the explosive charge will get the kill for Oku. Oku, what a hero for Najin. Well, yeah, you can see how fast this Tristana can take down the towers, needing just half a wave, but he's also just getting all his autos off. He's not being zoned off the turret whatsoever by this Azir, so. Yeah. I mean, he's getting five hits per every time he just gets close to these turrets. That's all it takes. Especially with that E onto them to pop after four hits, and that's a three in him, all down. For long to I am. And Oki. there goes Tristana. <laughs> Bye. Oh man, what a day for OQ. Isn't it always what a day for OQ? <laughs> That's true. It may not always be such a good day, but it's always an adventurous day for OQ when he plays here in Champions. Now Baron and Dragon both up at similar times. Dragon's gonna be about 30 seconds earlier, and uh, that doesn't really mean too much for long to I am. I mean they're pretty much stuck in their own jungle. Well, they actually, Dodger can win whatever they want. With this yes. Tristana and the front line that they've got to protect her while she uses oh, that man. explosive charge on turrets. Dude's uh, like they've got too. six minion waves, every, or six super minions every wave going into the base. Uh, and he's just waiting for Oki to come up. There's the Arctic Assault. Now Oki jumps forward. He gets a lot of damage down to Frozen. He flashes forward. He just needs one more hit, and he's going to get the pop. Frozen goes down, and that should be game. I mean, the one champion that can really pressure Oki away out of range from the Nexus turret. And oh, yeah, Oki's just completely safe behind that front line. Ignar gets dragged in. There's the depth charge and a nice glacial prison. But the kill still goes through. There's a reset. Oki, he's hungry for more. He gets the kill onto Roar, actually. Goom taking that one. Wants another one onto Apple, and oh, the crit's not gonna be coming in in time for him to pick up the kill in Fountain. But that will be a game for Najin in this best of three. Well, first time we've seen that new Tristana here in Korea, and now OQ coming out with the win. He played it well. Yeah, played it well. Well, I mean, you know, it really flipped when that first pair happened. <laughs> it certainly did, Chilva. It certainly did. I am looking pretty in control of that game. The game would have been so different, even yes. if Najin had won. It would have been yes. so different would have been. if that first Baron just didn't happen at all. They handed oh, a, ma man. a massive gold lead to Najin, got OQ quite fed on yeah. that Tristana, and then somehow he kept on getting objectives with auto attacks. 